Okay, in, in this video, we are going to look at the mold concept. So the, the mold concept is strictly based on calculations. So just think of the mold as the universal currency for chemistry. Every topic, almost every topic, will involve the mold. Right? For the mold concept itself, there are certain calculations that we will focus on. This will involve around the mass of a substance. So once you are doing the mold concept, you will be doing calculation involving the mass of a substance or the volume of gas or the number of particles. So once you start a whole concept, which is basically calculations, the focus of it will be on the mass of substance volume of gas and the number of particles. Good. Now I'm going to take you through three scenarios involving different calculations in this video and in the, in the next video we will look at a fourth scenario. So, what can say when it comes to mass, volume of gas, number of particles, each of them as a number that you will always have to use. For example, once you are dealing with number of particles, you will have to use a number 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of a gorgeous number. So any calculation involving number of particles it will involve Avogadro's number. If you are dealing with volume of gas, there are two conditions. Either RTP, room temperature and pressure, or STP, standard temperature and pressure. If it's room temperature and pressure, you will have a value of 24 dm3. If it's STP, you will have a value of 22.4 dm cube. And if you are dealing with the mass of a substance, you will have to work out the molar mass of the substance. So in the whole concept, if you are going to do a calculation involving volume of gas, you will need to know the condition. If it's RTP, you will be working with this number. If it's STP, it is this number. Any calculation involving particles, you will use Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. Calculation to deal, to deal with the mass of a substance, you, have to, you will have to work with the molar mass of the substance. So, just to make things clear, you should not mix these. So, if you are working with particles, you should not be using any of these numbers. If you are calculating something for volume, you should not be using Avogadro's number. So, these at the top, I just give all of them a name, right? So mass, the volume of gas, number of particles, I just refer to them as factors. Right? So to just give them a general term, I just call them factors. Right? If you, if you notice, these values at the bottom, they will never change. If it's not going to change, that means it's a constant. These values can change. 
So from one question to the next one, the number of particles given, it can vary. The volume of gas, all of these at the top can vary. So I just call them factors. So in the mole concept, you will be dealing with three factors. Mass of substance, volume of gas, number of particles. Each of these factors have a constant that goes along with each of them. So the constant for particles is Avogadro's number. The constant for volume of gas, if it's RTP, 24 dm cube. If it's STP, it's 22.4 dm cube. And if it's mass, you will calculate the molar mass of the substance. I said I was going to take you through three scenarios in this video. The first one, so let me just put this here. In the first scenario, what we are, we are going to do, we are going to learn how to find the number of moles. So in the mole concept, you will be given any of these three factors and ask to find the number of moles. So that's the first case, finding the number of moles. Whenever you are calculating the number of moles, one rule, you must always divide. If you want to find the number of moles, you must always divide. Now what are you going to divide? You will divide whatever factor you are given by its constant. So if you want to find the mole, you will divide the factor by its constant. So this is the first scenario. Finding moles. Mole is equal to factor over constant. And there are some examples for you. So the first example First example, So the first thing you must do is look what the question is asking you for. So clearly it says how many moles, right? So the question it is asking you to find the number of moles. I just said that if you want to find the number of moles, you must always divide. What are you going to divide? Whatever factor is given in the question, you will divide it by the appropriate constant. So what was given here? Once you see dm cube, dm cube is the unit for volume. So once you see dm cube, it tells you that the factor you are working with is volume. So to know to know which factor is given in the question, you will just look at the unit. So the unit is dm cube that tells you that the factor is volume of gas. Once it's volume, it will either be RTP or STP. And the question, it says that RTP. So we know that if we want to find moles, we must always divide. They gave us a factor, 2.5 dm cube. Once we see dm cube, we know that it is volume. RTP, so we must use 
24 bmq now we are finding moles right bmq becomes a bmq the unit must be moles so you will just multiply by one mole and the answer that you will get is 0 0.104 So in this question, you are asked to find the number of moles in 2.5 dm cube of carbon dioxide. Notice I did not pay any attention to this because it was irrelevant. The question could have just said how many moles are in 2.5 dm cube of a gas. But I just specified the, the gas and put CO2. All you need to find the number of moles is a factor and you just put it over the constant. Remember, every factor has a constant. So if they give you a factor, yeah, you will already know the constant. So there is nothing else to work out. You spot the factor, you should know the appropriate constant. In the second example, So in these three examples, we will be finding the number of moles. So in this example, we are finding the number of moles in three grams of aluminum. So how many moles are in three grams of aluminum? What is the factor given here? Check the unit. It is not BMQ, so we know it's not volume. G is grams. Gram is the unit for mass. So once you see that the factor is gram, then the constant is molar mass. So the mole here would be 3 grams. Because we're dealing with mass, the constant we have to use is molar mass. This number is when you are dealing with particles. This number is when you are dealing with volume. And the molar mass is when you are dealing with mass of a substance. They gave you the mass of aluminum, which is 3 grams. So you need to know the molar mass of aluminum, which is 27 grams per mole. Gram will cancel gram. So 3 divided by 27 that is 0 0.111 moles. Now you cannot put per mole. Just because gram cancel gram, and you say per mole here, you write it but that it's incorrect. Let's work it out. What this is saying, right? Gram per mole here, it means gram divided by mole. That's what the gram per mole means. And remember, your, the, the gram here is the, mean, is the numerator. So it's basically gram over one divided by gram over mole. Remember, fractions, this will be equal to one more gram over one times, you will flip here, so it becomes moles over gram. So gram cancel gram, you are left with mole as the unit. So when you are calculating mole given the mass, do not put per mole. It's actually mole as you can see here. If you work with the units, you will see it is moles because the grams cancel each other. And the third one now, it's how many moles again that are in 2.5 times 10 to molecules of water. No, molecules. So notice here, 
water is a covalent compound. Once it's a covalent compound, you will not see particles. A covalent compound is a molecule. So when you see the if the article for molecules are give you molecules, it is still particles. Particles is the general term. If it was a single atom like aluminum, it would have said how many atoms? Well, so because it's a covalent compounds, that is why you have molecules here. So the question says how many moles are in 2.5 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water? What is the unit? Molecules. If you look here, you don't see molecule here, right? So it's not volume, it's not mass. Once you see molecules, it's particles. Good? And particles deal with Avogadro's number. So the factor is particles, that means the constant is Avogadro's number. Remember, I already told you, once you want to find moles, you always divide. And as you can see here, what are we doing? We are always dividing factor by the constant. And we will do the same again. So mole is equal to 2.5 times 10 23 divided by 6.3 times 10 23 molecules. Okay. Right, molecules will cancel. Molecules. The unit you're looking for is mole. Say so just divided by one mole. And the answer is zero point four one five. So said in the mole concept, based on how the questions can set up, there are four scenarios. We are looking at the first one finding moles given one of these three factors. And as you can see, we are always dividing the factor by the appropriate constant. So in the first example, you are given volume at RTP and asked to find the moles. The value for RTP is 24. So it's 2.5 divided by 24 factor divided by a constant. In the second one, the you yes, saw uh, 3 grams. Gram is the unit for mass. So you are going to put mass over the molar mass. The third one, molecules here still referring to particles. So you have to use Avogadro's number. That's the first scenario. Finding the number of moles given a factor. Second scenario second the second scenario though. divided by its constant and as you can see if you want to find the factor it will be mole times constant so for the mole concept you are going to do two things multiply or divide the only time you will ever divide is when you want to find moles. The only time you will divide is when you want to find moles. The next case, you are going to want to find a factor. You will multiply. So either you 
either you will be dividing by the constant or you will be multiplying by the constant. When you are dividing by the constant, it means you are finding the moles. So if you are not finding the moles, that means you will be finding the factor. So you will either divide by the constant or multiply by the constant. The only time you will divide is if you want to find moles. So you have three things, mole, constant, and factor. If you're finding moles, this is out of it, right? You are definite factor and constant. You must divide factor by the constant. If you're not finding moles now, if you're finding a, a factor, right? Remember I said the only time you will divide is if you're finding moles. So now you want a factor. It means that you will have to multiply mole by constant because you will either be dividing or multiplying. And the only time you will divide is if you are finding moles. So in, in this case now, we are finding a factor, so we are going to multiply mole by the constant. And the example, So this says now, the question, we always look first for what the question is asking for. What is the mass? So clearly, it is asking you to find the mass. So clearly, it is asking you for a factor. Factor is mole times constant. Now, what is the constant for mass? Is it Avogadro's number? Is it RTP or is it molar mass? Mass, molar mass. So you will multiply the moles by the molar mass. So it will be 0 0.85 mole. The molar mass for sodium carbonate is 106 grams per mole. So for that is 90.1 gram. The second scenario now, the second example, it says what volume the market of the So in this question it says what volume? What volume? So clearly it, it is asking you to find volume. So again it is asking you to find a factor. So it is mole times constant. They gave you volume at RTP. So that is 24 TMQ. So in the mole you know what volume will. 0 
mole of oxygen occupied at RTB. They gave you the mole, you know the constant for the factor volume. And say so it's 3.6 ohm. So you have mole and you have the MQ. Nothing has been cancelled in terms of the units. The unit for volume is DMQ, so you need to get rid of the moles. So you just divide by one mole. So no mole will cancel more. And that took you with 3.6 DMQ. Next one. How many atoms? atoms, it is referring to particles. So if you say atoms, molecules, it is still referring to particles. So, again, it is asking for a factor. So the number of atoms to be equal to the mole times Avogadro's number, 6, 6.02 and it's 10 to the 23 atoms. Now, the unit, we are finding atoms, so we need to get rid of the moles. So again, you will divide by one mole. And so here it should be 3 and 10 to the 23 atoms. So, in the first scenario, we were just looking at finding moles where they are given the number of particles, volume of gas, or, or the mass. And we always divide the factor by the constant. Now if you are not finding the moles, so, constant never changes, right? So you will never be out to find the constant. So if you're not finding moles, you will be finding a factor. So if you are given the mole and asked to find the factor, you multiply the mole by the appropriate constant. If you are given the factor and asked to find the moles, you will divide the factor by the constant. And that's what we did. scenario no? finding a photo finding a photo given a different given a different photo so this is finding a photo given a different factor. what does that mean Let's do it. As I said, more concept, strictly calculations. So look at this question. What is the mass of 2.5 2.5 DMQ of CO2? at STB. So let's look at this question. What's the approach? It says, what is the mass of 2.5 DMQ of CO2 at STB? So first thing as we always do, what is the question asking you for? It says, what is the mass? It is asking you for mass. Mass is a constant. That means you will multiply the mole by the constant. If it's mass, then the constant must be molar mass. 
it's CO2, and the molar mass for CO2 is 34 grams per mole. Now, if you look up, it's 2.5, and you put 2.5 here, it is incorrect. If you put 2.5 here, it is incorrect. Look at the unit, and look at what is here. Mass is mole times molar mass. Dm cube is the unit for volume. It simply means that the question it did not give you the number of moles. So you will need to find the number of moles. How do we find the number of moles? Whenever we want to find moles, you always divide the factor given by what? By the constant. So in the question, it asks you for mass. But it did not give you the moles. It gave you volume. That's no problem because you will know that all you have to do is put the volume over the constant. It says STP, so this time it's 22.4 dmq. Mole is factor over constant. All you have to do is work out the moles and get and get 0 0.112 moles. Now that you have the moles, you can go ahead and complete the question. Now I can see more. Four point nine three grams. So let's go again. The question says what is the mass? Ask your name for a factor, so it's mole times constant. As you know by now, once you get mass, the constant for mass is molar mass. So it would be mole times molar mass. However, the question it did not give you any moles. So you need to convert this to moles. You see the unit is dmq, that means it is volume. It says STP. So, the value now is not 24, but 22.4. That's the constant when it's STP. So, you divide by the 22.4, you get the moles, and you complete the question. A second example. How many particles are in five gram of calcium? asking you for particles, so number of particles, more times constant, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, mole, do we have the mole? It says gram, so we don't have the moles, but we know mole is factor of a constant, we have the mass, you will divide by the molar mass of calcium, which is 40 grams per mole. So 5 grams divided by that, you should get 0 0.125 moles. Now, once you have the moles, you can go ahead and complete the question. So is 7.5 times 10 for the 22. And that's the first three scenarios. 
I'm going to put three because there's no and you can try it on your own. and find what it Okay, so try these four questions. I'm going to upload it in part two. I'm going to show the working out in part two of this, and as well as explain scenario four. So this is the end for part one of the mole concept. But remember, you will either be finding moles or factors. If you're asked to find the moles, you will always divide by your constant. Hmm? Whatever the constant is, you will divide by it. And you must be given a factor. If you are given the factor, if you are given the factor, if you are given the moles and asked to find the factor, you must multiply mole times the constant. However, if you are given a factor, right, and you want to find a next factor, you will multiply mode by constant. But first, you will have to do this. So in this, the third scenario, we are given a factor, like this one, and ask to find the next one. It's a combination of step one and step two. So first, convert whatever factor you are given into moles and multiply it by the constant. So like here, you were, it says how many particles are in 5 grams of calcium. The first thing I did, you converted 
converting the 5 gram into moles. So you did step 1, and then you perform step 2, finding the number of particles, which is mole times constant. So when you are given one factor and asked to find the next one, it's a combination of step 1 and step 2. Alright, that's that. Oh, I might put some, I might work it out as well if I don't upload it. I might just work it out on a sheet of paper and post the picture on Instagram. So if you want to see questions, I will work some, I will work questions as well and post them up. So that's Biotech 1111. If you want to check out more questions. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section and I will try to help you. Hope oh, this was helpful. That's it.